grace to you and peace from the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ. At a time when they were deeply afraid, deeply uncertain about where the road ahead was going to lead them. The disciples gathered with a meal for Jesus, with Jesus. And Jesus said to them, make yourselves at home in my love. That is our true home. Wherever we are, however it is with us, Christ holds us in his love and says, you are home. You are home. In my love. That is all you need to be sure of. That is all you need to be certain of. Make yourselves at home in my love. That is enough. Let us worship God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone else living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. Turn back to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven. Then you will be given the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children. It is for everyone our Lord God will choose, no matter where they live. Peter told them many other things as well. Then he said, I beg you to save yourselves from what will happen to all these evil people. On that day, about 3,000 believed his message and were baptized. They spent their time learning from the apostles, and they were like family to each other. They also broke bread and prayed together. Word of God, word of life. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given you to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me the anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup 
cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The day Jesus rose from the dead, two of his followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles outside of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, What has happened? They said, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, he was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty just as the women said. But they didn't see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted. Why can't you simply believe all that the prophet said? Don't you see that these things had to happen? That the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. Jesus acted as if he were going to go on, but they pressed him, stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening, the day is done. So he went in with them and here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them, taking the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to them at that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? They didn't waste a minute. They went up and on their way back to Jerusalem, they found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. 
Then the two went over everything that had happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my favorite Winnie the Pooh stories growing up was one in which Piglet snuck up on Pooh from behind. Pooh, said Piglet. Yes, Piglet, said Pooh. Oh, nothing, said Piglet, taking Pooh's paw in his. I just wanted to be sure of you. I think one thing that all of us humans have in common is that there are things we want to be sure of. There are things we want to be certain of, things, people we can count on. One of the realities that COVID-19 has invited us to live into is that we have had to let go of so much we are sure of, to let go of so much we are certain of, about how life looks, about how we do life. And so maybe a gift of this season is that now that we have had to let go of so much, as we begin to return to some state of normal, how do we not simply grab up all of our old ways of being, pick up and cling to all of the things that we have been sure of, all the certainties we have had to let go of about what a good life looks like? How do we not do that, but instead take advantage of this time when we have let go? to be wise about what we pick back up again. The columnist Julio Vincent Gambudo writes this. We will do anything, spend anything, believe anything, just so we can take away how horribly uncomfortable all of this season of letting go feels. And on top of that, just to turn the screw that much more will, we, will be the one effort that's even greater. The all-out blitz to make you believe you never saw what you saw. The air wasn't really cleaner. Those images were fake. The hospitals weren't really a war zone. Those stories were hyperbole. The numbers were not that high. The press is lying. You didn't see people in masks standing in the rain, risking their lives to vote, not in America. You didn't see the leader of the free world push an unproven miracle drug like a late night infomercial salesman. That was a crisis update. You didn't see homeless people dead on the street. You didn't see inequality. You didn't see indifference. You didn't see utter failure of leadership and systems, but you did. You are not crazy, my friends. The great American return to normal is coming. Everybody's going to be shouting to us to get back to how it was. But from one citizen to another, I beg of you, take a deep breath, ignore the deafening noise, and think deeply about what you want to put back into your life. This is our chance to define a new version of normal, a rare and truly sacred, yes, sacred opportunity to get rid of what isn't life-giving and to only bring back what works for us, what makes our lives richer, what makes our kids happier, what makes us truly proud. We get to Marie Kondo the Dickens out of everything in our lives. 
We care deeply about one another. That is clear. That can be seen in every supportive Facebook post, in every meal dropped off for a neighbor, in every Zoom birthday party. We are a good people. And as a good people, we want to define on our own terms what this country looks like in five, 10, or 50 years. This is our chance to do that the biggest one we ever have gotten, and the best one we'll ever get. And so, there is much we have had to let go of. And the question is, how are we doing having to let go of what we have been so sure of, what we have been so certain of, the life that we have lived without thinking that much about it. And now we have this opportunity not to just pick up and return to normal, to grasp onto and cling onto what we have had to let go of, but to say, what do I want this life to look like? And I think above all, the spiritual question of this season of COVID has been, can I not need to be so sure of so much? Can I live into uncertainty and not let that terrify me? Not to be so sure, not to need to be so certain. I think that's what our gospel story this morning invites us into. The disciples are returning from Jerusalem. It is the first Easter and they are lost. They were so sure, they were so certain that this Jesus was the Messiah who was going to restore Israel to its previous power and glory. And instead, this Messiah had been hung on a cross. They were so sure, they were so certain, and they had to let go of that sureness, that certainty. And they don't know what to do with the fact that some of the women disciples came and said that they had gone to the tomb and it was empty. They don't know what to do with that. Their world can't hold that. So they are bereft, they are lost. Everything they were so sure of is gone. And this stranger approaches them. The readers know that this is the risen Jesus, but the writer of Luke's gospel says their eyes were kept from recognize him and recognizing him, a very strange thing to hear. They walk along for seven miles. Jesus says to them, you are so slow. You are so thick witted. Don't you understand? what happened with Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection. They don't get it. They get home, they invite Jesus in. Jesus does what Jesus did on the night of his last supper, took bread, blessed, broke it, gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, they recognized him, and then the story says, and Jesus disappeared. The Greek says, Jesus unappearing became. Jesus unappearing became. And I've never understood why. They just recognized that this stranger had been the risen Christ all along. Think of that moment of recognition. He is with us. He is here. He is alive. Think of all they wanted to do. If I had been in that moment, what I would have done is lunged across the table and grabbed hold of him and said, you are not leaving me again. I have you now. You are in my grasp and I will never let you go. But Jesus unappearing became and this season of COVID-19 has helped me understand a reason why. Maybe Jesus knew 
that what all of his followers would want to do when they knew he was back with them alive was to grab hold of him, cling to him, and make him the Messiah they want him to be. And by unappearing becoming, Jesus says, you will not cling to me. It's what he says to Mary in John's gospel on that first Easter. Mary discovers that the gardener is really the risen Jesus. And the first thing Jesus says to her is, don't cling to me. He doesn't unappearing become in John's gospel, but he says, don't cling to me, Mary. I will not be clung to. I will not let you make me who you want me to be. I will not become the champion of your ideology, your political party, your pet causes. I will not cheer for your sports teams. I will be who I will be. You cannot tame me. You cannot box me in. I unappearing become so I can be free to be the Messiah and you can choose if you will follow me. So these disciples, Cleopas and his friend, discover that Jesus comes to us in the stranger's guise. They walked with him for seven miles and they didn't recognize him because they didn't expect that the risen Christ could be present in this odd companion that they found. What Jesus says to us by refusing to allow us to cling to him and grasp onto him and make him in our image is you cannot be sure of me. You cannot be certain of me. You cannot control me. I will surprise you. I will keep coming to you in ways you least expected. I will come to you in people you really don't like, in situations where you expect no goodness. I will come to you in times when you are not sure of anything, when you feel completely uncertain and out of control, that is when I will come to you. And if you cling to your certainties, if you cling to what you are so sure of, then you will be blind to me. You will not notice me. You will not see me. You will miss the gift I have to offer. And I want you to be open to me, however, wherever, whenever I come to you, whoever I come through, I want you to be open to me. So maybe by becoming unappearing, Jesus is saying to us, let go of your certainties, let go of your need to be sure what you can trust, what you can be sure of, is that I have made a home for you in my love. And my love might ask you to go places you don't want to go. My love might demand things of you you don't want to do or don't feel like you can do. My love might call you to go places that are the last places you ever want to be. And you get to choose. Will you worship your need for certainty? Will you worship your need to be sure? Or will you trust that with your home in my love, that is all the certainty you need? That is all you need to be sure of. The best lesson I have had about letting go of what I was so sure of and letting go of my certainties came during a study trip to Israel, Palestine back in 2014. Our, tra our travel trip was going to meet with a rabbi at a Jewish settlement. Jewish settlements are communities of Jews that are built on land that international law says should be part of an eventual Palestinian homeland. 
And so simply going to a Jewish settlement and meeting with someone who lived there told me this is a person who hates the Palestinians. This is a person who has no sense of the justice that God demands. This is someone who I have no interest in being with, somebody who has no gift to give, give me. He's a bigot, he's prejudiced, name it, I didn't want to hear him. I expected no goodness from this conversation. And so we sat in his living room and he told a story that broke me open and rocked my world and told me, Dave, you don't have a clue. You are so sure, you are so certain. Because Rabbi Hanan Schlesinger talked about going to a meeting of Israeli Jewish parents and Palestinian parents. And what those parents had in common is that they were grieving the death of one of their children. The Israeli Jews were grieving deaths of children who had been killed by Palestinians. Palestinian parents were grieving the deaths of their children who had been killed by Israeli Jews. Hanan Schlesinger confessed, I was 50 years old before I realized that the tears of Jews and the tears of Palestinians are the same tears and grow out of the same broken, angry, anguished, powerless hearts. That meeting converted Hanan Schlesinger and he became someone who created opportunities for Jews and Palestinians to come together. And he was hated by his friends and the people in his community. They called him traitor. They called him someone who had forgotten where his loyalties lie. His longest friend told him, if you are going to try to love the enemies of the Jewish people, I have no more love for you. Hanan Schlesinger was one who came to me as Christ. A stranger I had no interest in getting to know. I was so sure, I was so certain who he was before I even got to know him. He told me, Dave, let go of what you are so sure of. Let go of what you are so certain of. I could have missed the Christ who was alive and speaking through him, loving through him, healing me through him. I could have missed him. But by the mercy of Christ, I was broken open enough to hear this courageous man, this man who has more faith than I ever will. This man became for me the living Christ, calling me to let go of what I am so sure of, to let Christ surprise me, to let Christ come to me in someone I never, ever expected to be blessed by. This season of COVID, as we have had to let go of so much we are sure of, so much we are certain of, before we rush to pick it all back up again and put our lives back to normal, let us take advantage of the opportunity of, that this great pause offers us. Let us reflect on the possibility. Let us trust the possibility that we don't need to be sure 
You don't need to be certain of anything more than this. The risen Christ says to us, make yourselves at home in my love. Living in that love is all we need to be certain of. At home in Jesus' love is all we need to be sure of. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the triune God as expressed in these historic words. I in all people according to their needs. Dear Gracious God, as people all over the world gather in front of TVs and computer monitors to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter, help us to feel united as one. Together, all though, phys all though physically apart, united to worship, united to sing, and united to break bread. Open our eyes to see you are here with us, loving and supporting us through this pandemic and unknown time. Lord, in your mercy. Dear loving God, during this time of stay in place, all our lives have turned upside down. Be with our families. Bless all parents with patience while being a worker at home and a teacher at home. Bless and guide our children. Help them to feel safe to know they will see their friends and teachers again. Calm their fears. Help them to focus on their schoolwork. Help all children to finish their schoolwork so they can be ready for the next school year. Bless all teachers as they invent new and creative ways to teach and connect with their students. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, faith communities all over the world and in our area are finding new and creative ways to connect and worship. Support our brothers and sisters in Christ at St. Philip Lutheran Church. May they continue to be a light in the community as we live through this pandemic. Many of your children have found their faith journeys taking turns, some for good, and some off course. Bless our members John Karen and Chad Everly as they travel their faith journey. May they find the direction exciting and full of your support. Bless all your children in their faith journeys, supporting and loving them on their way. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Master Healer, Many of your children are sick in mind, body, and soul. This pandemic has so many sick from a cough to near death. But as the pandemic takes center stage, there are still many of your flock battling illness. Be with all who are ill. Help to heal their bodies, their minds, and their souls. May be with all healthcare workers. Keep them healthy. Grant them patience, surround them with safety. Today we lift up all who are ill and all healthcare workers. Lord, in your mercy. Now into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we share the peace of Christ, this is one of the times when I really miss not being in the same place. To be able to hug you and offer you signs of peace and to receive those hugs back. So if you are watching this and no one else is with you, if you have a pet, Offer that peace to your pet. If you do not have another life with you, 
think of someone in this community who you want to share Christ's peace with and imagine doing that. Think of someone who might live on the other side of town or the other side of the country or the other side of the world who you want to share Christ's peace with and do that. Think of a person or a community of people who are facing really, really hard times these days. Extend Christ's peace to them. Think of someone who you have trouble liking. Someone you really wrestle with respecting. Offer the peace of Christ to them. For in Christ we are all one. And Christ's peace knows no limits, knows no bounds. All of us are in need of that peace. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share signs of that peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We stand in the resurrection garden of God a place filled and shaped by love and ripe with all it might become when we are open to the Spirit's life and ours becoming one. This is the table of the risen Christ, a place fashioned and furnished by love and rich with its promises. So come, whether you have seen and believed or are dubious and doubting still, whether you confess confidently or come to this meal with a fragile, fearful heart. Come and share these gifts of grace, encounter Christ, and be healed by love and transformed by life. We remember with wonder and joy that love, though broken on a cross, was not defeated. We rejoice that love, though swallowed by death, was not silenced, neither defeated nor silenced. Love lives and speaks words of welcome, healing, and hope to all. In awe of all you have done and all you are doing through us, we join our voices with that of creation and with all those who bear witness across the world and throughout the ages to the eternal power of your love and life. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Before the bright dawn in the garden in which love was resurrected, before the cold silence of the tomb by which love was swallowed, before the black horror of the cross on which love was broken, before the bitter struggle of the Gethsemane garden through which love affirmed its choices, Jesus ate a final supper with his friends. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup and offered it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink of this, do so to remember me. 
And so we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Calling that meal and honoring that life, eating this bread and drinking this cup. We thank you, God, for making us part of the ongoing story of your love and life. Now we pray, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that we may once again encounter Christ's love and be transformed by Christ's life. Friends, wherever you are at this moment, if you wish to take bread and take the cup and eat where you are, know that you do not eat alone. The spirit of the living Christ binds us all together. So any of us who eat this meal, share this meal, not only with others in your church family, but with Christians around the world who eat this bread and drink this cup and fill themselves with that living Christ. So you never eat this meal alone. We are together, we are one. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us return thanks. We give you thanks, holy God, that in this meal, Jesus Christ, love resurrected, has met us once again in this garden and touched and transformed us with life. May the peace of the resurrected one, the challenging peace of committed life, the liberating peace of selfless love, the vibrant peace of new possibility, recall us to radical living, empower us for rich loving, and transform us with radiant joy. Alleluia. Amen. peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith. Let us go into the world, not afraid, not alone.
Let us go by God's good graces safely to 